this video where I dance for the ones. Oh, great.
dog as a pet if they are just living alone or there just two of them and they are living uh, independently a pet dog helps a lot and uh, there's a quote and it is hard to explain it says the only part of this story is not good a party that is not in this book okay the only part of the story which is not known for certain is whether or not the dog knew what he was doing for charles chucks So Who are who are familiar with the story? Believe he knew what he was doing every step of the way. I'm one of those who believe because I watched it day by day. So it's a true story. But they say we don't know whether the dog knew he's helping, whether he knew or not. He no, did help. Yeah, he did help. About the dog Duke. Duke was rough, was a rough playing dogman, pincher, four-year, sorry, uh, four-year-old, twenty-three kilos. His coat was red with a fawn vest. Chuck Cooper had doubts at first about buying him because his wife Ma Marcy was not only not really a dog lover; she was a tiny blonde. Pomeranian, uh, Pomeranian was her idea of the right size dog for a colonial house on a small plot. This Duke needed a Hector. Uh, Hector. Chuck visited Duke at the kennel several times before he made up his mind. After about three months, he decided he had to have the dog, uh, the big dog. Duke's appeal for Chuck was his rambunctiousness. It took a long time before Marcy was more than polite to the dog. So, what is rambunctiousness? What is rambunctiousness? Rambunctiousness. He was very active and playful and friendly. So, you know, some dogs they are very active. They'll see their master and they'll jump on them. They'll run here and there. They'll be able to attack. So, they are very full of enthusiasm. So, but they say that. Um, Dogs, they they inherit a lot of qualities from their master. They also imitate their master, and if they live with them for a long time, they can walk like their their master. So uh, dogs and also, and they never forget that. And they never yeah. And dogs can like after a while they can start uh, understanding what their master is saying, even though they they are not. Oh, they understand perfectly yeah. what their master is saying right from even though they speak English. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They can speak yeah, in Telugu and Tamil and uh, Marathi and uh, Bengali. They don't have to speak in English. They can speak any language. <laughs> That language doesn't matter. Yeah, or so, uh, medicine, yeah, like we can. उंड So, I don't know. Maybe because she spent a lot of time. She's a dog lover, and she goes out of her way. To... What and... was the dog saying? I was poor. Who are those? Okay, I was wondering how do uh, people come up with long words like rambunctious? That's <laughs> why they have to be so long. Okay. Now read the following account. Let's start with. You. In 1953, Cooper was a favored young man. A big, genuine grin symbolizes his highly competitive nature. Oh, what does favored young man mean? Favored young man means he was liked by everyone. Standing six foot one, he played on the university football team. He was already a hard-changing, charging zone sales manager for a chemical company. Everything was going for him. Then, then when he was one minute, you read three paragraphs. Then we ask him to read three. You read first three paragraphs. Then he was driving. When he was driving home. When he was driving home, one autumn twilight, a car speed out. Speed out. 
A car sped out in front of him without warning. Hugo was taken to the hospital with a sub subdural hemorrhage in the motor section of the brain, completely paralyzing, paralyzing his left side. One of Jack's district managers drove Marcy to the hospital. Sped out means like the car drove in front of him. Yes, he was uh, like uh, a car spread out in front of him means another car basically came and ran his car. He was car. walking. Oh, no, he was driving. Driving home. Home. and another car dashed him. Okay. The car which was coming from the front and it was in high speed. Her husband couldn't talk. He could only breathe and see and his vision was double. Marcy phoned a neighbor asking him to put Duke in a car. Yeah. So, in this three past and paragraphs, we come to know what happened. Like, uh, Hoover, he was very popular. He was on the college basketball team. Favored by everybody. Yeah, favored by everybody. Not only that, he was, he, was yeah. he, was also, he was also a great, like, successful. Hard charging means it is hard to bargain with, right? Yeah, hard charging means the one who's, uh, uh, you know, a uh, hard charging Put person. Yes, he's like, if he's going to do it, that means he's going to win that league. It's like that. So, a hard charging sales manager. And then, while one day he met with an accident. What is Twilight? Twilight is that 7 o'clock time. When uh, it's not uh, fully dark, but it's not, but the sun is the sun just set in, and, but it's still not dark. Like the so between uh, uh, oh, the dust and, and yes, the dust, dust time. Yes, so when the sun has settled, when the dust mean early, no, it's dust dawn. is when it's dawn, dawn, dawn is early morning, morning. morning. Yeah. and dusk is when uh, it's uh, the sunset is yeah, sunset yeah. is dusk, so twilight is that time after dusk around us. Okay, read the fourth one. Huh, so she, uh, when she came to see, when his wife came to see, who got her wife in his wife to hospital? With one of her district man. One of his district managers. He drove Marcy to the hospital. Marcy is his wife. Marcy is his wife. And when she saw his condition, she couldn't talk. She realized he couldn't talk. He couldn't talk. And so, Chuck, sorry, uh, the Uber's nickname is Chuck. No. Uber's nickname is not Chuck. Uh, yeah, because Hooper is not, you don't put a no, man in Kenneth. Kenneth, Chuck is a dog. See, when she saw. No, the dog is Duke. Yeah. Chuck, Chuck is Hooper's name. Chuck is Hooper's name. Is it, what is the first one? One of Chuck's. Okay, one of Chuck's. Okay, yes. No, in the first video, Charles, Chuck, Hooper. Yes, yes. Chuck's the district manager. I'm reading really the third line. That when she saw Chuck couldn't speak and his uh, left side was paralyzed, she asked one of her neighbors to put Duke in a kennel. If they could, she knew that she'll have to concentrate all her energies and attention to her husband. She won't be able to pay, give any attention to the dog. So they decided to put him, they know, she decided to put him in a kennel. Hooper remained on the critical list for a month. After the fifth week, some men from his company came to the hospital and told Hooper to take a year off. They would create a desk job for him at the headquarters. About six weeks after the accident, the hospital put him in a wheelchair every day there. The, every day there was someone working his paralyzed arm and leg followed by a box, exercise and a wheel to offer. However, Chuck didn't make much headway. In March, the letter came out of hospital. After the excitement of homecoming wore off, Chuck hit a new low. At the hospital, there had been other injured people, but now, each morning when Marcy quietly went to work, it was like a gate slamming down. Dick was still in the kennel and Chuck was alone with his thoughts. Okay. So here, uh, you know, after a month, yeah, the, doc the office asked him to stay at home. And it took a year. A year. Take a year off. They would give him they agree. Yeah, they, they are agree. very understanding. Of yeah, they agree that they will create a desk job for him. What is desk job? Desk job means he was a sales manager. That means he used to be always on field, visiting yeah. different offices, making the sale. Now he will create a desk job. Somewhere he can sit and do the work. 
Oh, some job. Job. He doesn't have a job. Yeah, he doesn't have a job. And, uh, and then the hospital, you know, for six weeks, he underwent a lot of... What does a way to walk around mean? Sorry? Where? That, what does a way to walk around mean? Like a fifth pair of six, that's our time. Uh, wheel walker. 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 Like, you know. Is it a wheelchair? Yes, wheelchair and a walker. So, here, see, he, they, he, he was put in, they put him on a wheelchair. Every day, they would have someone working on his paralyzed arm and leg. They would give different kinds of, you know, their acupressure, acupuncture, uh, physiotherapy, and all that, the various baths. And exercise and a wheeled walker. So, have you seen um, there's a walker? Yeah, and they have to like, uh, and if you try to walk with the help of a walker, uh, I think I've you've seen, seen a like, I think I've seen. So, so sometimes they, it has a wheel, it has a wheel at the on the so it's not a wheelchair, you stand and then you just drag it and then you try to walk. So when you drag, because it has those small wheels, it moves ahead. What does uh, what does headway mean? Headway means progress. So he didn't make much uh, progress. This kind of uh, he, uh, no, he didn't. He did not. Because uh, all such ailments, no, they take a very long time. The progress is very slow. Like hemorrhage is something to do with the brain. Right? Hemorrhage is brain. Uh, there is bleeding in the brain. Yeah, that's like whenever you have damage in the brain, that takes like a very long time. Yes. Oh, what was this? Uh, it was like a gate slamming down. It was like a gate slamming down means somebody closing the door on your face. And then you're left alone. It's like you go somewhere and uh, you knock at your friend's house. Uh, and I think what they're trying to say is that because he was no longer working and like they put this dog in the can and it's like every time his wife goes to work, yeah. just to, he had nothing to do and it's completely no. So he just thought of it. He was deserted by his own thoughts. Uh, that's why he uh, thought the uh, door slam down even, even though she had answered it. First. She had not done anything to him. Like she was not being rude to him. No, not but rude. Yeah, like he was, yeah, he was left alone. Yeah, so this. Okay. Finally, he decided to bring Duke. Jack said he wanted to be standing when Duke came in. So they stood him up. Duke's nails were so long, were long for four months. That was my and when he spied Chuck, he stood quivering like 5,000 words. Then he let out a bellow, spun his long nail wheels, and launched himself across 3 meters of air. He was a 23 kilo missile of joy. He hit Chuck above the belt, causing him to fight to keep him balanced. Those who saw it, the dog knew instantly. He never jumped on Chuck again from that moment. He took up a post beside his master's bed round the clock. But even Duke's presence didn't reach Chuck. The ones iron muscles iron muscles? Iron muscles slammed on the dingy frame. Secretly, Marcy cried as she watched the big man's grin fade away. Severe face lines set in like cement as Chuck started at the ceiling for us. Stared at the ceiling. Stared at the ceiling. Out. Then out of the window, then at the Okay. So, because he was left and he was alone, he was feeling lonely, they decided to bring Chuck home. Sorry, they decided to bring Duke home. This para tells us how, what was Duke. Because they kept in the kennel for four months, like they just want to take care of the person. Yes, in the kennel, there are so many dogs, you know. In the kennel, there are so many dogs, and they don't, like they are, they don't pamper. They are dead to us. No, the, the, the dog, depends. Then, even there, the dogs take the whole food and not They have yeah. facilities. Oh, that I don't know. But then, uh, see, it depends. There are uh, some places which are like uh, like daycares. There are some where you have to pay a lot of money. You know, it's like a babysitter for dogs. So if, if you're going out, they take care. There are some kennels where there are many such dogs. They don't have that much staff to take care of each dog. Like they will give them food and water, but they would definitely not groom them as they would otherwise groom the pet dogs. You know, cut their nail, brush their teeth, 
pay their fees and all that will not be done. So, so when he came, definitely he had long nails because he was in that kennel there. And they say that when he saw Chuck, he stood quivering. He was very, very happy with his master. He was very happy. He probably realized that there's something wrong with him. And he was ecstatic to finally see his master yeah. for months. And he was literally quivering, shaking. And then suddenly he was so happy that he jumped on him. He like he ran, he jumped on him. And apparently, and the more he jumped, he knew instantly that uh, something yeah, was wrong. Yeah, he jumped on him. And uh, yeah, Chuck, Chuck really, and Chuck found it difficult to stand. Yeah. And probably and that's when he realized. Like, the dog was so smart that he's no, not. Dog is smart. He's not what he was earlier. And since then, he never jumped on him. He took his place next to his bed. But in spite of that, the situation did not change. He was still that lonely man who used to look outside. Was Ranji, Ranji, Ranji frame, like slack on the Ranji frame. Yeah, slack on the Ranji frame. Yeah, slack on the Ranji okay. frame. The one iron muscle slack on the Ranji frame. So he was like, he had like, like he was six one and he was a player, so he had nice muscles and like toned body. But uh, now, uh, yeah, Ranji. so now. They now those muscles and his frame, his frame, that was his figure, his body frame, it, it, it looked as if he's turning old. So secretly his wife now could see so many lines on his face, worry lines. When we, and she would feel extremely bad that he would just sit there, look outside the window, look at the sky, look at the ceiling, and be in his thoughts. See. Anurag. It, uh, what does Gwen mean? Sorry? What exactly does Gwen mean? Grin. Grin? To grin is to laugh. Yeah, <laughs> that is grin. Ha 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 is laugh. When two fellows stare at each other day in, day out, and one can't move and the other can't talk, boredom sets in. Duke finally couldn't take it. From a motionless coil on the floor, it's been dressed feet quivering with impatience. Yes. One can move and one can talk. Yeah, rough. Lie down, Duke. Mm -hmm. Duke down to the bed, put his pointed nose under Chuck's elbow and lift. He natural needle and snorted. Go run around the house, Duke. But Duke put it. He lie down with a reproachful eye on Hooper. An hour later, he would come over to the bed again and yap and cook. He wouldn't leave, but just sit there. Right, yeah, now, you know, when you, like for days in and days out, he would, the Duke would sit there and uh, uh, Chuck would sit on the bed. And he, there was a time when Duke just couldn't take it. So Duke, what he said, he did, you know, he got up and he started nudging him. So Chuck said, go lie down, Duke, go there and said, don't come and bother me. But Duke wouldn't listen. Yeah. He poked his pointed okay. nose under Chuck's elbow and he was literally asking him, he lifted his hand and uh, he gnashed okay. and one minute and needed him. That needed him means continuously tell someone to do something. He kept asking him to get up. So he said, go run around the house, don't bother me. He would go, he would move around the house and he would come back again and keep poking him, nudging him and asking him to get up. Yes, now what is your other? Uh, motionless coil means? Motionless coil is there where he was like one? Like he was uh, sitting in a coil, uh, like a coil. No, it's just a phrase. Like he was sitting there like one lump of potato we say, no? That was motionless coil, like if you keep a coil somewhere, so you were just sitting there, not moving. Okay. One evening, read Anura. One me. evening, Jack's good hand idly hoped the leech not to be scholar to hold him still. It was like lighting a fuse. Duke shim, shimmied himself, U shaped in anticipation. Even Hooper couldn't explain his next move. 
He asked Marcy to help him to escape. Duke crunched, jumped, fought for balance. With his good hand, he placed the leash in his left hand, folded the palace fingers over it, holding him there, hold, holding them there. Then he leaned forward with Marcy supporting him by the elbow. He moved his right leg out in front. Straightening his right leg caused the left foot to drag forward. It went outside the right. It, 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 it could be called a step. Duke felt the sudden slack in the leash and pulled it taut. Chuck swayed forward again, broke the fall with his good right leg with strength. Thrice he did that, and then collapsed into the wheelchair and exhausted. So next day, the big dog started early, charged to Cooper's good side. Jab his nose under the elbow and snap his head off. So, so this is how they started walking. I could not understand See, what it means, Chuck's, Chuck's good hand ideally hooked the leash in, onto Duke's collar. So with his good hand, he held Duke's collar. Okay, the dog's collar. And he also did not know how he is going to do. And he tried to get up. Then he held the, he asked his wife to help him. Then he Held the leash. Shimmy means to move slowly. Okay. So the dog, you know, he also got up slowly. He did not just jump like that. He knew that his master cannot walk. So he shimmied slowly. That means he walked, okay, got up. And then he held the leash in his good hand. Okay. And then with his right hand, he and then held that left hand, you know, which was paralyzed. He just held it like this. Like this, and then he asked his wife to help him get up. Uh, the dog moved ahead. What happened when the dog moved ahead? He put his right leg for balance ahead and dragged the left. Again, the do dog moved. So again, he took, dragged his right hand, uh, put his right leg. That was a good leg ahead. Dragged the left leg. And the dog was patient. All this while, the dog was patient. What is Prance? Prance means move ahead with jerk. So he just walked ahead. First, he didn't realize probably the dog. So the first movement was a little jerky. He just jumped ahead. In, a, in this way, he took three steps and he was tired. And he sat. Next day, Duke again got up and Next day, the big dog started early and he told his master to again try. He went to his nose, put his nose under the elbow and snapped his head up. The big man's good arm reached for the leash. With Hooper standing, the dog walked to the end of the leash and tucked steadily. Four so called steps they took that day. First they took, they took three, then they took four, three. Leaning back against the pull, Hooper learned to keep his balance without mercy at his elbow. Wednesday, he and Luke took five steps. Thursday, six steps. Friday, failure, two steps, followed by exhaustion. Uh, but in two weeks, they reached the front porch. By mid-April, neighbors saw a daily struggle in front of Marcy's house. Out on the sidewalk, they saw the dog pull his leash, taunt, then stand and wait. The man would gag himself and breathe. It is the leash stout. Stout means tightly. The man would drag himself and breathe. Abreast of the dog. Then the dog would search out to the end of the leash and wait again. The pair set daily goals Monday, the sixth fence post, Tuesday, the seventh fence post, Wednesday, okay, and so on. So they had a goal. So first he took three, then four, then they Friday, Friday they failed, they just took two steps, he was too tired. Again, they started and finally they reached the front. They how did get back from the front porch? Yeah, the same way. Oh, wow. What? So <laughs> he did it twice. Yeah. So, and then they started, you know, 
in the front. They started coming out of the house and started doing the same thing. The neighbors. Yeah. When Marcy saw that you could do for her husband, she told the doctor, who prescribed a course of physiotherapy with weights, pulleys, and a whirlpool bath. And above all, working every day with you on a limited sleep. So now, when Masi saw what the dog had done for her husband, she consulted the doctor, and the doctor suggested further physiotherapy with weights, so that you know the muscles they get uh, they get strength. Okay, we done it. By now, neighbors on the street were watching the pattern of progress. On June one, news spread that Hooper and Duke had made to an intersection quite far away. Soon, Duke began campaigning for two trips a day. And they lengthened the targets one drive away at a time. Duke no longer awaited a decision. On January 4, Hooper made his big move. Without Duke, he walked the 200 meters from the clinic to the local branch of his company. This had been one of the district offices under his jurisdiction as zone manager. The staff was amazed by the visit, but Gordon Dole, the manager, Chuck said, Gordon, this isn't just a visit. Bring me up to date on what's happened. Will you so I can get to work? Doll again. Gabe. Uh, I'll just be an hour. It will just be an just be an hour a day for a while. People are here. I'll use that empty desk in the warehouse. Uh, and I'll need a dictating machine. So what's a dictating machine? Dictating machine is you talk and the machine gets like, you know. Thanks. So, or like a typewriter. Oh, okay. It's a typewriter. So, like you don't have to type in your hands. Uh, actually, this, I don't know how old the story is because the dictating it's machine. It's in 1953. 1953, then it may not be that the new talk and get it right. Dictating machine here means typing machine. Typewriter. So, on Jan 4, Hooper actually walked independently 200 meters from the TV. Alone. I, like, I like how it was the news when uh, uh, Hooper and Dave made it to an intersection. Yeah, because point every point. day the neighbors would see how this man is struggling with his dog to walk. You know, one of your neighbors, like, you feel sad when he had been an accident, a young man had been with an accident. So everybody was probably happy that yeah. see, when you see somebody struggling and then when they are successful, you everybody feels happy, right? Yeah. And what I like about the 24th paragraph is he goes to the office, he tells them that that was the office under his jurisdiction, under his control. And he tells them that this is not just a visit, I want to know what has been happening in the office. Show me the papers, show me the records. And he says he'll start coming every one hour, every day. He'll sit in that yeah, office. And, and his boss is very surprised. <laughs> his boss is surprised, he's, he's giving instructions. So I like his confidence. Yes, read. Back in the company's headquarters, Chuck's move presented problems tough ones. When a man fights that hard for a comeback, who wants to tell him he can't handle his old job? On the other hand, what can you do with a salesman who can't go around and then work only an hour a day? They didn't know that Hooper had already set his new next objective, March 1, a full day's work. <laughs> He had like in the company they also had saying what to do with him now. He wants to come back and work for one hour, but he's a sales manager. Who wants a sales manager who cannot move around? And so he they thought that hour. this was a he was a burden for the company. He'll be sitting here and doing the desk job for one hour. Who wants a person who works for one hour? Like how to get rid of him? So but then they did not know his target. He had set a target for himself. First March, two months, only two months, and he had decided he will. I just gave my social exams. So uh, what I'm thinking is like uh, because of, uh, because of this poor health, the liability was up in this. I just gave my uh, social exam. Like so I'm thinking like <laughs> he was liability, but he moved otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Chuck hit the target. Read it. Chuck hit the target and after March 1, there was no time for the physiotherapy program. He turned completely to Duke, who pulled him along the street faster and faster, increasing his stability and endurance. Sometimes, walking after dark, 
Cooper would take and fall. Gay could stand still as a force while his master served to the dog. It was as if the dog knew that his job was to get Jack, uh, Jack back on his feet. Certain months from the moment he, the moment he worked four days, Jack Cooper was promoted to regional manager, covering more than four states. Jack Marcy and Duke moved house in March 1956. The people in the new suburb where the Hoopers bought a house didn't know the story of Chuck and Mew. All they knew was that the new neighbor walked like a struggling mechanical giant and that he was always pulled by that page stock that acted as if he owned them. <laughs> yeah. So Chuck hit the target. I mean, Chuck reached the target. He, by March 1st, he had, he had joined the office and so much so that in three months, from the time he joined the office, he was promoted to be the regional manager covering more than four states. So he was like more aggressive and he was working far more efficient than he was earlier. So they also purchased a new house in the suburbs. And uh, 1956. Yeah. So, and the so neighbors. So, if you were there, able to pick his knife right back up yeah. inside the house. Yeah. And uh, the neighbors there did not know that he struggled. They did not know the accident he had undergone. They only knew that this new neighbor, he walks like a giant mechanical man. Because definitely, he, is, he doesn't, he would not walk uh, normal. normal like the other people walk. And uh, this mechanical, he walks like a mechanical and man and is dragged by the dog. And it's off. Yeah. And this dog walks him as if he owns the man. Can we even replace him? Okay. On the evening of October 12, 1957, the Hoopers had guests. Suddenly, over the battle of words, Chuck heard the screech of great something. Instinctively, he looked for him. They carried the big dog into the house. Marcy took one look at the old speeding, and his brown eyes with the stubbornness gone. Hold the bed, she said. Tell him I am bringing you. Several people jumped with the dog. No, please, she said, and she picked up the big dog. Carried him gently to the car and drove him to the animal hospital. Duke was drugged and he made it until 11 o'clock. The next morning, but his injuries were too severe. People who knew the distance, Chuck and Duke had come together, but friends both at time. Now, was the big man walk alone day after day? They wondered how long will he keep it up? How far will he go today? Can he do it alone? A few weeks ago, word, word, worded word, as if as if in special tribute to Duke to Duke to Duke, an order came through from the chemical company headquarters. Therefore, advance our objectives step by step. Uh, Charles Hoover is appointed the assistant national sales manager. So he became the assistant national sales manager. A bigger, bigger post. I mean, what happened to Duke? You, when he was outside, he was hit by a car. And he was drunk. Yeah, he, and he died. He died. He, he was hit by a car. So they immediately lifted him and took him, like, uh, his wife, Chuck's wife, she refused, uh, She, uh, you know, Marcy, she didn't allow anyone to carry him. She said she will carry him. She carried him to the vet and to the hospital. They drugged him. That means they gave him okay, medicines. But his injuries were too severe, so he did not survive. So he died? Yeah, so he died. So now this everybody who had seen that this, this man walking with the dog day in and day out. Now people wondered how long how long he walked. Now he started walking alone. And people wondered how far he will go. He never had walked without his companion. But he did. He did walk. So much so that he was made the national Saves That's the story of how that dog saved this man. Have you done the question?
question answers in school Who are they? 
officials from the company who came to visit Chuck. Yes. And uh, why did they decide to do this? Understanding that Chuck's health condition that would not allow him to travel or move around extensively. That's why the camp, the company. You are already written the answer. So why don't you write? You write. So who are they? They are the officials. No, I thought you are going to like try to share the answer last time, but she is still reading the answer. Yeah, she has already written there. So they mean who? Officials who came to yeah, yeah. see the see Cooper Cooper yeah. officials who came to uh, officials from the company who came to see Cooper in the hospital. Yeah. Now, why did they decide to do this? Uh, because like uh, he was not really in a uh, state where he could like um, How do you know he was not in a state? Yeah, because, because he has uh, partly paralyzed Yes, and, so uh, mention that Cooper was almost left side of Cooper was partially He was the uh, Cooper was partially paralyzed Yeah, so like Which made him uh, not to move Yeah, he could not walk Yeah, he could not walk As a result, he could not move around Yeah, so that's why uh, they tried to give him a uh, desk job so that uh, he could sit and Simple. Okay. Because an extraordinary dog, what special qualities will really he exhibit to respect this? So, a deep was like a, a very, very affectionate. Like he, he had a lot of love for his master. And he like was he, an he understanding went, dog. And he was very intelligent. He went like, um, like he was immediately able to realize when his master was like a. No, not like uh, fit. Yeah, not really fit. So he didn't like that. Jump on him. And he helped him uh, to uh, walk, walk a very long period of time. So, so he was also he was patient. patient. Yeah. So he was, he was patient, patient uh, he intelligent. Was, yeah. He was affectionate and he was, he was very smart. So you will see he was intelligent because once uh, when he realized that his father, owner, master is not physically fit. Yeah. He did not jump on him again. Yeah. Uh, then he was very, very patient when uh, due uh, yeah, to. He patiently, he even encouraged uh, actually yes. his master to. Then he realized that. He got, uh, like after a few months, he started to imagine uh, his master to yes. start walking. So then he realized that and the Chuck refused to move from his bed. He actually nudged Chuck and forced Chuck to stand up. When Chuck tried to walk, he was extremely patient. He would stand there and, uh, you know, we patiently walk him, walk along with him. So, intelligence, I've seen you know, explanations. Are, I've seen dogs so high it is a little bit difficult to imagine them making him so patient. So, each dog is different and they change with the changing time. Yeah. Like my neighbor's dog, he, he is such a, um, he's this big, huge dog. Yeah. But he's such a baby. Like if, he, if they take him to pee outside and if he sees another big dog, he refuses to pee, he gets scared and he comes back and then the owner has to get him back and he, he keeps telling he will not do, I'm there with you, I'm there with you. And then again he has to take him uh, once the dog has moved somewhere, <laughs> you know. So they are so different, <laughs> each one. Otherwise if you see him, and he, he like he's like all the time happy. He'll jump on you and all that. But a huge dog. But he's so, very. He was like child, childish. childlike. He gets scared very quickly. Like that. <laughs> very funny. Maybe he was embarrassed to do it in front of another dog. That I don't know. But he gets scared of some big dogs when they start barking. So but he himself is a big dog. He himself is a big dog, but when he sees other big yeah, dogs, I've seen him himself in the middle. Yeah, and he hasn't. He doesn't bark like they bark. So he is like this, you know, timid. He's very timid. Darbo. Darbo. Maybe he's a shy. He's a shy dog. He's a shy. Dog. He's a friendly and shy dog. Is it a female or? I don't know, I think it's a male. Oh, 
Who says you know, ma uh, boys are not shy? <laughs> what problems did Chuck present when he returned to the company headquarters? So we say uh, because Chuck initially could only work like one hour a day and he couldn't move around because of his uh, paralysis condition. So he had to mm, sit, uh, sit at a desk and he could only work for one hour a day. And yes. he did it. Because uh, if you have a company to uh, like, have a sales manager, so who couldn't uh, move around and he could. Uh, I could just work for this and uh, it is also important that Chuck probably had to gain confidence of his co-workers. See, when he decided to come for one hour, and they were like, oh, iska kya karna hai? Ye abhi ek hai. you know, see the reaction was not welcoming. They were not very really welcoming. They were wondering like what to do with Chuck. So Chuck also had to earn the confidence of his co-workers that he can work and can do a better job. So that is another thing. So first, because he could not uh, move around, he could he had to do only desk job. He had to sit at sit there and work only for an hour. Plus, he also had to earn the confidence of his co-workers and make them believe that he has the capabilities. Okay, so remember that. You can write down the points at least on confidence of the co workers. And uh, that is a part of the question. They were asked what problems, not like it's how. It's a problem to earn your co workers' confidence. No. no. I think they asked him what problems did he present to the company. Then he returned to the company. I don't think this is part of that. Uh, what problems did Chuck present? When he returned to the company. This is Jack's own problem that you are. Yeah, so not having people's confidence in you is a big problem when you work. They don't even uh, they didn't want him, him, yeah. So he had to prove himself. Should I go to the next question? If they didn't want him, I would they give him a desk job. And not because you can't just chuck out someone, there are legal things. When they meet with an accident. You can't check out Chuck. You can't check out Chuck. Yes. You can't remove someone just because they meet with an accident. Yeah. You know, there are certain legal things you need to procedures you need to follow. Why do you think Charles Hooper's appointment as assistant national sales manager oh, at, the end, at the end? Uh, one day they had guests and uh, they heard screeching sound of a uh, car so they all ran outside and they saw this car had dashed Duke <laughs> the, the car hit Duke and Duke was unconscious so they took him to the vet so they, the vet tried to medicate him and gave him drugs he could not survive and he was uh, by the yeah. And then uh, people wondered, all the people in the neighborhood, that what will this man do now? All his, all these years, he had walked to the office and he had walked with his companion, the dog. How far will he go alone now? So because now uh, Chuck had to walk alone. And he then went and so he was hit by a car. Yeah. And then. Uh, That's a what happened to him. Yeah. But that did not stop Chuck. Though his companion was not there, though his pet dog was not there, that did not stop Chuck. Because and he had, he had, he had, a, he had a, um, uh, he had like, he was, uh, had a heart pain of steel, like he could uh, constantly come back from, um, yes. get back up from such a I think uh, uh, the story's author uh, could be a simple question. That's what he says, no? I have seen him. Yes, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, why do you think? Uh, yeah, so appointment as assistant national sales manager can be considered as a tribute to Duke. Yes. Why? Because uh, he's the one who helped him through his all his sporting difficult times <clears throat> through his face. So after he died, people wondered how long he will go. But he did manage, he did go alone, he walked alone, and uh, he was later on appointed as a national sales manager. So how was it attributed? He, though he though the dog that the dog had helped him stand up on his feet, helped him walk and um, 
resume his old life. Okay, but after his dog died, uh, Duke died. Uh, Chuck refused to give up the struggle. Chuck walked alone. Chuck survived alone. Performed well, and came out as a successful sales manager. So that was indeed a tribute because he did not want all the hard work put in by his dog go waste. So it was a tribute. Okay. Did you remember that? You both are not writing the answers. You will write in the class for sure. Will you? At least write few points. Now, if your teacher gives you additional points, add to it. Should I see again? So, like basically, um, Uber did not give up the struggle after his dog uh, death, and um, he was able to become a national sales manager, successful sales manager. So, like, uh, all of his uh, dogs were hard work for him put to waste. So, uh, Uber refused to give up. Dogs and cats were um, uh, in poor success on land. Cooper refused to give up his struggle after his dog died. He worked hard and became a successful national sales manager. As his dog died, he worked hard. And became a successful national sales manager. Thus, he refused. Thus, he refused. He didn't want the. He didn't want the efforts put in by his dog go waste. Or to waste. Yeah, he made sure that the efforts put in by his dog. One foot to waste. Now, if it's a brief answer, no, you'll have to first. If it's a brief answer, long answer for three marks, then you have to first write how the how this Duke helped him. The Duke helped him. He, you know, he gave his life. He helped him walk. He was by his side. Basically, we have to write. Both how the dog helped him and how Hooper did make sure his dog's efforts in Hooper. Yeah. So, and then end with this. Remaining will do later.